this is Jeff Seymour from the National Civil War Naval Museum and for this session of Curator's Corner I'd like to talk about paper. Now most people don't think about paper it's just something that you could just wad up and throw away after you've used it for a while but as a curator we have got to worry about the long-term prospect of saving as much of this as possible because some of these documents like the Declaration of Independence is really important. Now paper again we don't think about it comes in a variety of shapes and sizes and we've got to worry about light we've got to worry about pH ooh, acidity so we've got some science to worry about some chemistry during the 19th century paper making goes through a tr series of transformation both with the materials that you're using to make the paper with and the machinery all of these things create a different set of variables in the paper making process and so paper made from different materials and with different machinery creates a lot of different things that we have to worry about chemically for the preservation of the paper most of these transformations are not noticeable by the naked eye and you'd have to know a lot about the paper itself and it's it's really complicated so not necessarily not necessarily anything you really need to worry about. Uh, we've got linen rag. Yes, they would make paper out of linen. And then by the early 1800s, they're starting to make paper out of cotton rag. So what you're doing is making the linen or the cotton, you render it down into a pulp form and then you can shape it into paper and then you use all sorts of different chemicals to this. Now, some of the variables that you throw in is the water clean that you're gonna to use to help render down the paper. If it's not clean, you get all sorts of crazy shades of red and so forth. So those things are variables to deal with. The problem for us with paper conservation is that in the mid 19th century, they began moving from cotton and other fibers to using wood pulp. Wood pulp has a stronger cellular construction material called lignin. And combined with the material that you use to, to help soften that to make the paper is highly acidic. So the paper that you're going to start seeing about the mid-19th century is higher in acidity and thus you have this strange situation where paper produced before this period with that linen or cotton or even straw is has a greater survivability than the wood pulp paper. So these are some things that you have to look for. Now, earlier, here is an example of a book that was published in 1865. And if we open the pages of the book very carefully, here is an example of a linen rag paper with this book. And this is part of the congressional record. This is something that's published every year by our government. And you compare this to a book that is published in, say, 1907 with wood pulp. And if you can tell, if you look very closely, the difference in the type of paper. This is more flat looking. And if you look very closely, you'll notice that the ink sometimes bleeds over into the paper as opposed to the kind of, sh a little bit of a sheen that you see with this. This is actually less stable than this one. One of the things that you're gonna run into is that if not kept properly, the highly acidic paper will become very brittle. If you've noticed old newspapers, when you fold them up, and put them next to a regular sheet of paper like this, over time it yellows. And that's the transformation of the acids from the newspaper onto the other sheet of paper. Now what do we do? Well, optimally we want to keep the paper in as low light as possible and keep the environment around it 
as stable as possible. So low light, keep as much UV light out of the area as possible, and the optimal temperature is 67 degrees, and the humidity you want to keep right around 45 percent humidity. So those are some variables that you can look at at home if you've got uh, important papers to keep. Now, what happens if, you know, what most people do, they're going to fold that sheet of paper up and put it in their pocket. If you've got a valuable document, go ahead and unfold that document because the process of folding it up breaks down the paper. What you want to do is find acid-free folders. And this is an example of an archival professional folder that is acid-free. You have to look for this. Don't go down to the store and you're just going to pick up some folders. You need to get archival quality folders that are acid-free. Look for it. And the simple thing to do is place this in your acid-free folder and you can either place it flat or get it in a box that you can file these things in and it will protect the paper to a certain degree. You can also encapsulate the paper. You want to look for mylar. And I mentioned a box. This is a, an archival quality box. These come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. They can be very expensive, but they are acid-free and lignin-free. So the, those are very important considerations. One of the things we have to worry about is critters. And one of the most common, nasty, dangerous critters we have to worry about is the silverfish. The silverfish loves to eat the material that they use to glue the binding together. That's what they feast on. So make sure that your environment at home that you're keeping your valuable papers in is critter free. And these little, these little guys are not fun to be around, so keep those away. There are other critters to worry about, but again, keeping pest control issues, that's that's key to good management of, of paper conservation. And ladies and gentlemen, might wonder why I've got a modern dollar bill out. We still print money on cotton rag. This is actually archival quality paper. So look for these different types of things around you, and these are some of the considerations that we have to take in the preservation and display of paper objects. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us again. I, I'm Jeff Seymour at the National Civil War Naval Museum, and come see us.